In the second part of our grip discussion, I want to take a look at the heavy equipment grips handle. They take great pride in this, and they're very skilled at it. And it's a joy to watch them work with it, especially this gentleman here who is restraining a dolly from running away from him as he goes downhill. And the cameraman's hanging on for dear life with his camera. He's trying to get us a shot of this woman uh, running down the glade here in Django. And we have another grip in the back holding on to keep it from running away. And the camera a boom operator trying best not to drop the, uh, the mic as we stream downhill. This is an easier job for these two grips, slowly pulling the, the uh, dolly back for this shot against the green screen. And these gentlemen here, going back to an earlier shot of a TV show about 30 years ago, they're using 35 millimeters, so the cameras are bigger, so the grip team has a little more to pull up and down the track there. Notice the track has got cinder block and shims to level it out. These guys are hustling because the camera's heavier, and, they, and the ground they're on is a little uneven, and they're working hard for their shot. Unlike these guys here, who are part of the same TV show, only they're at the uh, airport, and they're trying to get a shot of the models as they jump in the helicopter. However, however, these three guys who are handling the dolly are doing things that we won't allow nowadays, as is the person with the mic on the, in, the, in the sound department. These guys are wearing flip-flops. That is no longer allowed. You must have closed-toed shoes on any sets of liability. Obviously, you run over your toes. Here, we have the person with the mic and a Wookiee on the mic pointing the mic up, which means he's not going to get the sound of any of the people in the shot. He's going to get the sound of the helicopter blades, usually one at 45 degree angle pointing down towards the actors. Here we have some uh, guys kind of relaxed. I think they're in the camera department. The grip, that poor guy is on the other end of the jib making sure it doesn't fall, the camera doesn't fall in the water. This grip here, who knows what he's doing, but he's not doing the right thing. You do not use your cell phone on the set. You don't receive calls or make calls. If you need to communicate with your department, you use a headset. Maybe they couldn't afford one on this show, so they're going to have more interruptions, it's going to be slower, more amateur. We've got the two grips, maybe the three grips. One guy sitting down should never do that. One guy is actually holding on to the dolly. That's good. We can see the woman on the left is obviously the second AD. Just because of the t color of the tape, we can tell. We can see the focus puller sitting on the seat right in the middle there, and we can see the camera operator looking on. Here's another grip, taken five as he leans on his Chapman dolly, but at least he looks like he's semi-ready to go. Our key grip here, he's the champ. You can tell because of his sweat. He must have been working. He's got the hat on to keep the sun out of his eyes. And, and he's got the sunglasses to keep his eyes from making any contact with the actor. He's also got a headset, which means he doesn't have to use his cell phone. And notice the yellow tennis ball on the end of the grip arm that's uh, got the courtesy flag over the, over the camera. That's because people tend to make uh, you puncture their eyes or you can get in an accident because they don't see the end of the end of the pole as they're walking through the set because the light will be glancing off it. So they put a big tennis ball in there. So if people do accidentally run into the grip arm, they won't uh, poke out their eye. Here, these guys are strolling down the hill with the, um, uh, it looks like a doorway dolly on top of a modified dolly with uh, skateboard wheels. And notice the porta potty on the left there for the shoot. This is uh, a Chapman dolly, which is uh, a more expensive dolly used in a Hollywood set here, but we only need one guy because we don't have much to move. Unlike this guy here, who, excuse the blurry picture, but he's got track that's being leveled up with full apple boxes, one end all the way going down to pancakes and the other, but he's got a dolly on one end, and he's way out at the end of the jib arm so we can get a long, sweeping, establishing shot. Here we have a team working together in their last looks, and we got the camera operator putting the the camera on the, on the, on the dolly, we've got the elect electrical department adjusting the lights, we've got everybody working together. Here, together, grip and camera, because they operate the dolly, they tend to be closely allied. Here, we've got the camera department, you can tell because of the tape on his, on the guy's belt, the camera department taking their, their film out on the cart, and we've got the other cart with the C-stands and everything with the grip department, so they're both working in tandem. Gotta have gaffer's tape, well, it's not only for the gaffers too, it's for the grip department. Uh, many colors, many designs, it's uh, what we use on movies for most everything. Here's a Fisher King of All Dollies. This was developed in World War II for loading bombs uh, on planes, and so it's got to be smooth, it's got to be silent, it's got to be really well frictionless in all its movements. So 
uh, here it's set up with this camera. I am almost overkill because the camera's so small. But the thing about Fisher dollies, I think I said before, Fisher maintains them. No one else can maintain them because they don't want anybody else uh, giving them the liability. So you can only rent Fisher dollies, but everybody uses them because they're industry standard. Here, back in the 20s, we got John Ford shooting some movie with his grip department hunkered down on looks like a hole in the ground, a bunker here, because he's shooting a shot where the horse is going to jump over them, taking more chances then as a grip department and camera department than we would today. Later on in the 40s, or 30s here, John Ford shooting a western. Look at the dolly these grips have on the track. That track is not track. It's a bunch of one by fours on some apple boxes, and these guys have to make sure this dolly doesn't slip off there. There are no skateboard wheels to lock it on the track. This is pretty precarious. Here we have a uh, grip department bouncing big light for this scene. And here are two guys, one on the, on, on, the, on the Fisher dolly, one guiding the jib, working really smoothly together. I hope they got the shot because it's pretty difficult. Here we have grips lining up the jib. One end, they're going to have the camera making sure it's balanced because on the other end, they have weights, as you can see in the upper left corner here, weights to make that seesaw balance work. And if you see them on set like we have with these gentlemen here in this restaurant, they're adjusting the weight on this heavy-duty tripod for the camera so that the up-and-down motion is smooth. Here we have a higher up-and-down motion, so more weights on the end here with the grip, uh, uh, adjusting it with the camera operator. They're working together. The camera operator and the grip are working together in tandem, closer than the gaffing people, to get this shot. Here we have a, here we have a shot in, in, in New Mexico where we have a track set up on a, a whole skyline of apple boxes here. It looks like a city down there. Here we got full apple boxes. We have quarters, pancakes, shims on top. We, we raise that track so they can get the shot for this woman in the back of the van. And it's, um, it's so we don't have that rocky uh, bottom of the... Of the, of the, of the uh, dirt there to interrupt the smoothness of the flow of the camera and you can see how long it might take to get that all adjusted to level it out to get this smooth shot. Here's that King of the Dollies Fisher. It looks light but believe me it's not. In this studio shot here you can see how elaborate and heavy this thing can be but it all makes it so much smoother. Here's one that looks like it's left over from World War II but it's probably as smooth now as it was then. It hasn't been modified much in the, in the last 60 years. Here, we have three guys lifting it. They're straining, as you can tell. Three or four person job to get that up. She's got the skateboard wheels on the track, which is what we have now to make everything smooth. Here, smooth enough so that this gentleman here can do it single-handedly. With a doorway dolly, it's easier to do it single-handedly. The doorway dolly is what we use interior in buildings when we don't need that heavy-duty equipment. This, um, this, this is a, it's a light dolly, it's quick to move, and so you have your, your, your dolly grip here and your camera operator working together. Here we have a what looks like a lawnmower dolly with bicycle wheels, well, showing you you can modify your own kind of dolly to make things work here on plywood. I doubt if it's that successful. But, who knows? You can have your crate dolly here and try to get a shot just to make any, everything smoother. Here we have what we call flex track. It's rubber track that we put interiors when we don't want to, to, to damage the floor with your, with your steel track. And we uh, maybe can't afford the steel track or the space is too small to use a steel track. We put this flex track in there. The problem with flex track is as you roll over it, you get it, it gives you a bumpy shot. It seems like you would get a smooth shot, but it's not as smooth as you're going to get with steel track. Not as smooth as we're going to get with this steel track anyway. As we can see, we have a heavy-duty jib on it. With the weight of the jib and the dolly, will make everything a lot smoother. And this shot, where we're going to get a car driving by, we got this large jib on some uh, big track, so that as this car drives by, we can swing with it, and we can follow it farther because we have a longer arm on the, on the jib. Of course, not as long as an arm as we have here on our Condor crane, but long enough. Here are people we showed you having the uh, high, dolly, uh, high dolly track on the, on the apple boxes. They're getting ready for a shot at sunset. And um, here we have 
uh, scaffolding because the grip department is in charge of building anything that will raise or lower any kind of equipment like the tripod or, the, or any lights. So they're in charge of building the scaffolding. They are the engineers on set. The, and so here, this camera operator probably has a key grip right next to him because the key grip is the safety expert on the set. A camera operator doing any heights or running over any kind of uneven ground has a key grip behind him to hold on to his belt. This grip is loading up apple boxes for, well, maybe we're doing a scene like this where the actress, we need to get her legs up for the shot, so we need to put an apple box there to raise her legs because her legs aren't long enough given the size of the chair. We have apple boxes that we use for all sorts of actors, famous actors, to make them uh, taller or more comfortable. So the grip department works closely with the actors and actresses in that respect. So as they are here, they can brag about how closely they work with actresses, the key grip experience they're showing off that they get to hobnob with the stars. When we deal with real track like this, any shot that would have that would be in control. Not only the stunt department, the key grip, the unacknowledged safety expert on the set would not let anything happen unless they approved it. From Rashomon, a couple weeks ago, showing this shot where they use a silver-sided bounce board and a regular bounce board to give natural light to Rashomon, a classic movie. And here we see grips in the studio working very easily. Again, a camera, one grip, all we need, everything's so frictionless and smooth. Here we have circular track. A lot of people like that because you get this nice sweeping operatic look. It comes in halves because you don't want to go across the line in a 180. It is hard to pack though on trucks. A lot of grips don't like moving it around. They'd rather you just take the dolly and try to uh, kind of judge it, you kind of move it manually than rather on track, but you can still do it this way. Here, grip department comes in uh, into effect when they have to adjust the weather and we need our camera department not to get wet. They have here a solid over them. They put some plastic over the camera. Here in the sunlight, opposite problem, they do a courtesy with that 4x4 floppy we talked about, we can see the top and the bottom where it can create a sort of tent for the camera people. Deacons here in the rain has got the grip department to get a tarp so he can get underneath and focus the shots and the camera not getting wet. Camera not getting wet, obviously here, the grips have built a box so it wouldn't happen. But here, this gentleman is uh, building this contraption with all the speed rail to put his, his uh, whatever he's going to balance up there, a camera or whatever. Grips are the MacGyvers on the set. They construct like Tinker Toys or anything like that. Legos. They love MacGyvers in the sense they love to create contraptions that lift lights, flags, cameras, hang them from cars, off buildings. They are like the unacknowledged engineers too. So grips have a lot of fun on the set because they're always doing something.